So what's the voltage drop across the lamp now? Each one of them. That's right. It doesn't matter whether these are equivalent resistors or not. This is just like uh, using our ski lift analogy from earlier in the semester. It's just like opening up another path down the mountain. Well, if we open up this path down the mountain, that doesn't change the original path down the mountain. The original path still has a voltage drop of 5 volts. That voltage hasn't changed. Remember, what is a volt? What, what, what are the component units of a volt? Uh, joules per coulomb. Joules per coulomb. So in our analogy here, we were saying like the battery here gives, every time the charges go up the battery, it's like they're gaining five joules per coulomb. Yeah. And then when they go back down through the circuit, they have to lose all that energy. Just like this is like a ski lift that's giving each skier five joules per skier. Well, then when they go down this path, they should be losing the five joules per skier. All right, so what's happened to the voltage on the lamp? It's constant. And now we can pick out one of these equations for the power in the lamp. I use the V squared over R. Because what's happened to the resistance of the lamp? It um, went down. The resistance of the lamp. That's, otherwise, this wouldn't be a good yeah. expression. Remember, That's we want to use the expression where only one thing is changing. It's going to be much simpler to use the expression where only one thing is changing. Remember, we're trying to find here the power across the lamp. Well, that should be the voltage across the lamp divided by the resistance across the lamp, the voltage squared over the resistance. Well, to review, what's happening to this resistance? The voltage across the lamp is constant. That's right. It's true that the equivalent resistance that the battery sees is going down, but the resistance of the lamp isn't changing. That's just a physical property of the lamp. And the voltage across the lamp isn't changing. That's right. So it doesn't, when it's in parallel, it doesn't change? Yeah, so what's happened to the brightness? Up, down, or stayed the same? same. Okay, which I don't think was your first guess. Now, you, you were saying some, you were looking at some concepts that were correct in your first guess. So what were the mistakes you were making? Well, the most important mistake is that you weren't doing it on paper. The most important mistake was not doing it on paper. But even on paper, you might have gotten confused because you might not have been putting in subscripts. These subscripts here are crucial. We always have to say whose power or whose voltage or whose resistance are we looking at. The main thing that confused you there is you started by saying that the equivalent resistance of the whole that the battery sees is going down. But then I think you started trying to apply that directly to the lamp. Yeah. So we need separate equations. And I think that's pretty tricky. Unfortunately, we never really had time to do as much practice as we could have on this earlier. But you're, you're pretty sure to see a question like this in the test. So this is good to review now. So in this case, notice that in this case, <coughs> it's better not even to focus on the equivalent resistance. Because it was so much simpler just to focus <coughs> on the voltage across the lamp. We know the voltage across the lamp here is constant. So this isn't changing, and this isn't changing. So the power from the lamp is not changing. Now, that actually shouldn't surprise us. Remember, in your house, are the appliances in parallel. series or parallel? parallel? They're in parallel because do we want the appliances to affect each other? No, no we don't. We don't want, so putting, putting in this, this resistor here is just like, say, turning on your toaster or turning on another lamp. Well, when we turn on one toaster or another lamp, we don't want it to affect the first lamp. Remember that what happened when we turned on a second lamp in series, there was less power from this. Well, you, would not, you wouldn't want anything in your house to be in series because you don't want less power from one of your lamps just because you turn on the other lamp. So in a, in a normal, in normal wiring, everything is in parallel and nothing is in series because you don't want things to affect each other. If we keep in mind that common sense, then we shouldn't be uh, that surprised to see that the power is constant here when we add something new in parallel. Let's uh, work this out a little bit more. So this is all we need to answer this question. But now let's figure out what's happening to the power delivered by the battery. Now let's work out what's happening to the power delivered by the battery for this case. Well, that should be one. Now we should work on the total equivalent resistance. So the total re equivalent resistance goes down. Good. So the, the total, then should I talk about the, the current? We could. But I actually think we're now ready to just pick an equation. We can already oh, pick an equation here. So Which equation should we use? The, the same one. That's right. We should now, however, again, now we need new subscripts. Now we're looking at the power from the battery. And that depends on the voltage from the battery over the equivalent resistance that's perceived by the battery. 
So the, the voltage of the battery is the battery is is not going to change. That's constant. That's why this is the right expression to choose. We want to choose an expression with something constant in it if we possibly can, because it's much more confusing to evaluate something with two moving variables than one moving variable. And then the battery went down. So right. the re resistance, so the power is goes up. Battery. Which I guess makes sense, because I mean, if you put another resistor in and then neither of them yeah. change, it has to come from somewhere. Okay, that's a very good, important analysis. That's right. Again, just think about your house. This is like we had a lamp turned on in this room, and now we turn on a lamp in another room. Well, if we turn on a lamp in another room, should that affect the first lamp? No. no. But should it affect how much power we're paying for? Yeah. Yeah. So this doesn't have to be a battery. This could be the power that's coming to your house from the power company. Well, now the power company has to send you more power than before because they're powering two lamps instead of just one. So it makes sense that when you add in this new lamp in this new room, it shouldn't change the power that the original lamp is consuming, but it certainly does change the total amount of power that's coming from the power source, whether that's the battery or the power lines or whatever, because now we have that power that has to go to both of these over here. So I think the main thing that got you confused is I think you were trying to apply this analysis to the lamp in your first answer. So the key is to put in these subscripts to say who we're talking about in each equation. By the way, what would be a good way to, to put this on a test? Well, they might have done that like this. They might have said, they might have said, what's the effect of closing switch A? Well, if we close switch A, we get this picture here. So a lot of the time, these problems are done with switches. Uh, notice that when the switch is open, this resistor might as well not be here. Yeah. When the switch is open, the resistor might as well not be here. But when the switch is closed, we get a picture like this. So they're still in parallel, even if the battery is Who's, who's in parallel? Like in this picture, if you closed A, right. you still say they're in parallel even though like the battery is in between the... That is a good battery. question. I didn't think it made any difference whether I put this here or here, but let's see. So suppose I put this down here. I never thought about that before. Huh. Well, maybe not. Maybe I made a mistake. Yeah, so th this is totally wrong. I have to completely retract what I just said. I, those, those are not in parallel. That, that's a good catch. I should have done it like this. Got a little lazy in writing my picture. Yeah, so I should have said that the problem we did would be equivalent to closing this switch. Uh, but you're right, it would have been a different, it would have been a totally different thing with that other picture if that wasn't right. So, what, what closing this switch basically makes it into this picture. So what happens to the power of the battery if instead of adding um, another resistor in parallel, you just add in, I guess what was it called, the short circuit? Just, just right. plain wire, because then none of it will go through the resistor one anymore. That's probably one of the questions he had in here, so let's go through that, that's a good question. But then does that change how much the battery is, like does the battery acknowledge that now none of it's going through the resistor anymore? That's an excellent question. So the way this would appear in a question is, here's the lamp we're focusing on. Here's the lamp. And the question is, what would be the effect on the lamp of closing this switch? What would be the effect on the lamp of closing this switch? Well, if we close the switch, the circuit would look like this. And again, the question is, what's the effect on the brightness of the lamp if we close this switch? Well, it's completely dim. That's right. That's a good analysis. The lamp would go to a power of zero. So 
in the equations, that's because the current through it is zero? Yeah, so this is a short circuit. The current would prefer to completely go through here. So no current will go through the lamp. So the current through the lamp will now be zero. 